As we've been thinking about where we want to go for our, our Pioneer Trek this year, we've had a lot of different thoughts. We've had wonderful trek experiences here in our own area. And so we've blended those thoughts with, with what we thought ought to happen for our youth this year. And it's interesting, President Harrison and I have talked a couple of times about where we thought we ought to go and, and, and what we ought to try to experience. It, it was interesting that as, uh, as we were thinking about this, the thought came to me just randomly. I thought, well, I wonder if we ought to go to Martin's Cove. I wonder if we ought to take in that experience this year and, and see if we can make that work. And, Every family um, kind of joined together and uh, was given a hand cart. And then we uh, had a, a wonderful meeting right at the beginning and in, uh, in their, in their uh, fairly, uh, fairly large uh, hall there where they could accommodate a lot of people. And our, our group filled the hall. We had a great group of people. We had a, a large group of kids and adults that came from our state, moms and paws and children. And so as, as we took off in our hand carts, I think we were all had that energy and, and we're, we're trekking along. And one of the very first things that we experienced was crossing the Sweetwater River. I'm so glad that we had that experience. At first, I was a little bit hesitant, but, but President Harrison, he wasn't hesitant at all. He was the very first person across. And, so, and he uh, was a great example for all of us. And, and everybody filled in and, and a lot of our of our stake experienced that that crossing of the Sweetwater at that time, um, and it, if it wasn't it wasn't uh, uh, a bad experience, you know we dried off, and but I imagine how that could have been in November, and when there was ice flowing down the river and it was cold and you'd walked, you know, uh, so many th hundreds of miles to get to this point and and you're wore out, couldn't couldn't go any farther and have to then be called across to that river. There was, there was a, a spot there where it honored four individuals who helped those saints cross that Sweetwater River. They carried almost the entire company across, and, and what a great feat that was, being in that cold water for such a long time.
It must be far away. Cause I stand on my tiptoes. And I can't see a thing. Somewhere there's a mountain. I heard the prophet say. That we'll build a home there And never have to go away And it's a long, long way to walk But one day I'll climb to the top We had a wonderful uh, meeting uh, prior to going right up in the cove with our stake, and that many of our many of uh, many things were felt there. We we as a stake joined uh, together in prayer in in that um, little uh, spot prior to going up in the cove. And as we knelt in prayer and we asked our Father in heaven's blessings to be with us, I felt that was a great way to start. And they would ask our Heavenly Father for different blessings. So we're going to do that as a stake here. We're going to have a stake, uh, we're going to have a stake prayer. We're going to invite those of you who can to kneel with us in prayer. Recognizing there may be some of you who maybe it would be hard for you to kneel, but all of you who can, we'd like to invite you to kneel in, in prayer with us as a stake. And we're going to thank our Heavenly Father for, for this opportunity we have to be here today. So if you would all just take uh, kneel, we'll have our stake prayer. And, Dear Heavenly Father, we come before thee as a stake this time in prayer and give thee thanks for this wonderful opportunity that we have. in the cove and we could feel the sacredness of that area and know that that spot in Wyoming provided what little protection they could have felt uh, at that time with the winds of, and the storm and everything flowing uh, around them. They needed protection for, uh, for a while while that storm blew over and as they made their way up in the cove and we, we knew that there were so many saints that passed away up in there uh, and that they had to to just hunker down and, and, and be there. Um, we could feel the sacredness of that area. Little Larry, you're right here, but they're sitting in these seats. There's 56. So out of 500 people, just imagine all of those people who died in that five days. And as we came out of the, of the cove there, it was interesting to be up in the cove and see those granite rock uh, mountains that, that surrounded that cove and that what little protection that they received those those granite rock hills provided 
It provided some place to get out of the wind, provided wood that they could have fires and warmth, and, and that they, their meager rations were, were spread out among them and that they, they were able to, to, to make it. You know, we had a great experience there at Martin's Cove and, and, and felt like we, we just enjoyed that part of our, our, our journey. just enjoyed that part of our, our, our journey. We trekked back to the buses, uh, we, we loaded back up, and then we went to the sixth crossing of the Sweetwater River. And, and as we learned more about all the timing and uh, that took place, I was, uh, the one thing that I, I was really, uh, I don't know that I ever really would have understood, <clears throat> not having, uh, just having read it in books, the distance between these spots, between Martin's Cove and the Sixth Crossing, we drove in a bus for, I don't know, at least uh, over an hour. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it was at least 60 miles. And the and the vegetation didn't change hardly at all. There were just those those hills that you see in the high plains of Wyoming that were covered by sagebrush and not much else. There would have been, it would have been hard to make a fire out in Wyoming because there just wasn't a lot of, a lot of uh, material to burn. But the saints made it work. I guess they burnt sagebrush and whatever else they could find. But we, we went to the sixth crossing and as a stake, that was our first night. Uh, we had the wind blow hard uh, to give us that experience of, of hard wind and uh, that may have been felt by the pioneer handcart saints. Uh, it was interesting. I thought, oh no, we've come all the way from Salina, Utah out here to Wyoming and, and just to experience a, a, a stiff wind. I said, I hope that, that we could handle this. And it wasn't long and the wind but died down. There was thunderstorms in the area that created that wind. And right in the middle, we're in the Right, left, right, left, 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 Nice to go, go, girls to the right. The wind died down, we got our camp set up, and boy, the kids went to square dancing. And then they square danced. They square danced up a storm. They just had a great time square dancing, and it was so neat to see the kids square dance. Because they invited everyone, you know, all the kids joined in. There was hardly a there was hardly a, a, a young man or young woman that didn't join in, and Carolee and I were standing on the sideline there, and kind of wanting to, to dance as well. And then all of a sudden, I think it was brother and sister Dewitt said, "President, you got to come out and dance." And so I ran out, and, and they said, "No, we, we you need a partner." And I says, "Well, my wife's right here; she can be my partner." So we we danced a, a little bit with the with the kids and had a great time, had a great fireside that night. Now we're on down to the right. March, march. Here we go. Keep going. We got one more line. Here we go. New head couples, raise your hand. Here we go. All join hands and circle the ring. 
Where you are, give your partner a swing. Swing that little girl behind you. Bring your home. Oh, Don't sing all your own. Bring you up on a day. Let your sweet on a day. Sing your own. Evan uh, did a wonderful job, and Brother Brandt uh, did a job, did a great job as well. Those are two good high councilmen that did a lot to make our our trek experience uh, enjoyable. And they they talked to the kids, and and uh, we had just a great time. Woke up early the next morning and had such a wonderful day there at uh, the sixth crossing we went to we went in a, a lot of the country that the Willie Hancart uh, the Saints would have would have experienced as so they got to there and, and that was as far as they could go they had run out of the <clears throat> provisions there was no no going any farther that was where they were going to be until the rescue parties reached them and they they uh, they got to that point and, and, and distributed the last of their food and um, and then the rescue, and then Captain Willie, uh, we hear and uh, uh, took off with an, another a brother from the company and, and went to find the rescuers to lead them back to there. And we heard all those stories and heard all of those experiences and, and felt of the, of the experience. There was also a crossing there at the sixth crossing of the Sweetwater that those um, in our company were able to do again. We had had the crossing from the day before but we went through this time with hand carts. Many of many of those who didn't cross the Sweetwater, which was the majority of our of our stake, went across it. I believe the first day. But those who who, for one reason or another, didn't cross, uh, they crossed there. My wife was one of those who didn't cross the first day, but she crossed the second day. She's glad she did. We had uh, we had just a, a, a so many sacred experiences walking along the trail, and all of a sudden, just uh, feeling overwhelmed with the spirit, and, and tears came to many people's eyes, and they didn't know why. And uh, it was just a wonderful, wonderful thing to experience. It's hard to even put into words.
hard to even put into words the experience we had when the women were pulling their hand carts and the men were called off. <clears throat> we talked about that as a, as a company and how, how gripping that experience was and how hard it was for, for us as men to watch those women pull those hand carts. They were very strong and they pulled up this, this fairly steep hill and uh, did so in, in good fashion and, and helped each other and, and it was uh, it would have been hard to be a, a handcart saint and, and, and be able to be in those days and, and most of the women did so much more than they should have been called on to do but they, they did it and the Lord blessed them and strengthened them and, and uh, it, was, it was great to feel of their strength of the, of the sisters in our company and how strong they were and that experience is kind of really brought that home quickly. I'm Bryn Okerlund and I'm in Willie's Meadow in Wyoming on the trek and um, my favorite part of the trek was square dancing. I had an awesome partner and we had a lot of fun. Um, my spiritual experience was when we did the woman's pull. Um, it was neat to see all the men standing at the top of the hill watching us with their hats over their chests and um, it was just really neat and all of us girls were able to do it on our own. My favorite spiritual moment was when all the guys lined up the road and watched the girls pull the hand carts up because it shows how strong they really are. And I am Nadia Jensen and I am trekking for my ancestors. My The most fun thing that we did was trekking through the rivers and pulling the hand carts. And the most spiritual thing that happened for me was when we went off and read Joseph Smith History 1 through 20.
I, I have a testimony of the truthfulness of the gospel. That testimony was strengthened a great deal by the experiences that I felt at Martin's Cove. I've been in the temple and I felt the sacredness of that area and, and, and being in the temple and know that this is the house of the Lord. I felt that same, that same feelings of, of being in the temple in that sacred ground that we were on at, in, in, in our trek experience particularly at, at Rock Creek Hollow, knowing that that ground, that ground had been dedicated to and had been set apart, that it was sacred ground. And at different times on the trek, that my testimony was strengthened as, as, as to the truthfulness of, of the gospel, and that our Father in Heaven loves us, and that He knows us, and that this area is, has been protected and set apart, and that those same influences that protect the temple protect the, those areas of the church. testimony to you and I want you to know that uh, of my love for you and uh, those those uh, experiences we felt have have strengthened my testimony and my resolve to do better and my resolve to, to be better to, to do those little things that we each one of us need to do to to keep our testimony strong uh, reading our scriptures saying our prayers and attending those meetings that we need to attend and and, and reaching out to others and feeling of their needs and, and trying to meet and help and lift as, uh, as we go. And I bear that testimony to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.